Matvey Michkov. Matvey Michkov. Some would say Matvey Magic. Others would say Matvey Mania. But what I say, what I officially say about Matvey Michkov is that he's fucking elite. That he's a fucking stud. Oh my god. This kid is so fun to watch. He's going to dominate the NHL for so long, and guess what? He's a Philadelphia Flyer. <laughs> oh, we got something special here, boys. We do. Matt Vaymichkov is so fun to watch. Two beautiful assists once again tonight against the Columbus Blue Jackets at a 5-3 win. He's been going off the past so many games, whether it's even more beautiful assists. A couple of assist games, three assist games, how many ever he has. Pots in a couple of bingos on the power play as well. Does it all. He does it all. Point per game. It's point per game. At 19, just turning 20 years old, he's point per game. 27 points in 27 games. <laughs> Don't kid me with a good time. Don't tempt me with a good time. He's taken over the league. And this is just a little snippet. This is just a taste of the early sample size of Matt Vay Mitchkoff. What is this kid going to be the rest of his career? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It's, it's getting me happy. It's getting me excited. Oh, man. Oh, man. But before we get into all this stuff for tonight's Flyers game and talking about the previous other games because I haven't been able to talk about that as well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTP Sports. If you are new to the channel, haven't hit that subscribe button yet, tuned into the past couple of episodes, been tuning in for a little bit, haven't hit that subscribe button, I definitely recommend you hitting that subscribe button. Would definitely do me a great deal of service. Join up. Talking about Matt Vay Mitchkoff. If you love Matt Vay Mitchkoff, we have a lot of Matt Vay Mitchkoff content here. Because why not? I would love to talk about Matt Vay Mitchkoff forever. Every single day. I can't sleep without dreaming of Matt Vay Mitchkoff lifting Lord Stanley's cup. Come on now. <laughs> so hit that subscribe button. Will do me a great deal of service. Also, leave a like, drop a comment as well. I'd love to interact with you guys there in the comment section. Does me a great deal. We just surpassed a thousand subscribers. Looking to continue that growth of the channel moving forward. So I appreciate you if you would join here at TTP Sports. So getting to today's business. Also, if the mic sounds a little weird, a little different than previously. I was tampering with some mic effects and all of that stuff to maybe make it sound more crisp. So if you could definitely tell, leave that in the comment section down below if you think the mic sounds better or worse than it used to be, that would help me a lot. So I've been tampering with a lot of things here, so trying to figure some stuff out, you know, tech work. But uh, <laughs> aside from that, I digress. Uh, getting to today's game, Flyers win 5-3 to three against the Columbus Blue Jackets, and we haven't talked about the Fly Guys in a little bit. Then, you know, last time we talked about them was that crazy loss against the Florida Panthers the past Thursday night. And they played three games since, including tonight's win in Columbus. The previous two games, they did lose the back-to-back -back on the Saturday and Sunday night. They lost, they lost Saturday afternoon against the Boston Bruins in overtime after Matt Vay Mitchkoff pots the first two goals of the game there. Flyers lost that in overtime. You know, they blow that lead. The referees definitely didn't help into it. They definitely factored into the game's results, might I add. And then Sunday night against the Utah Hockey Club. Still haven't figured out a name over there. Uh, not the prettiest of games. They looked sloppy. They looked sluggish. And, you know, Matt Vybichkov gets another point. <laughs> I guess that's the most important thing there. But besides that, really nothing else special. It was kind of a dud. Basically, coming back from Boston, even though both teams were traveling back to Philadelphia, and really just nothing there, in my personal opinion. You know, they left Kolosov out there to dry, just, you know, nothing really spectacular 
and that resulted in, you know, a couple of losses in a row. Now you're back on the road tonight against the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are coming off of a West Coast trip, so maybe you could take advantage of a team that might be a little tired there. And the Flyers definitely did that tonight because I thought they were the better team throughout the majority of this hockey game. They get on the board a couple of times early. Noah Cates with a weird goal where Tyson Forrester, you know, that, that, third, that third line, honestly, has been shaping up to be, you know, putting up some good numbers in the past few games, putting up some good shifts in the past few games. You know, Noah Cates, Tyson Forrester, Bobby Brink, they're, they've been showing signs of chemistry, and it's definitely has been a fun watch, and they contribute more into the offensive game today. Tyson Forrester forcing a lot of turnovers in the offensive zone, puts a weird shot on net against Merz Lincolns. It goes off the post and goes off the shoulder of the goaltender, and then Noah Cates bats it out of midair and knocks it into the net for a 1-0 lead. So, hey, I'll take that any day of the week right there. And then not so long later, Owen Tippett threw a couple of screens, just throws the puck on net, gets through, and the Flyers are all of a sudden up 2-0 in this game. It's just, you know, <laughs> they look good today. They look good today, and that's the most important thing. And there's also some things that have been interesting that did stand out in this game for me, and actually the past few games, because Jamie Drysdale returned to the lineup, same thing with Sam Harrison, so that's definitely huge in terms of the health-wise for this team. Jamie Drysdale has actually looked pretty good in the past couple of games. I think today was probably one of his better games in a Flyers uniform, just with the way that he was skating, the way that he was anticipating plays, the way that he was making plays with his stick on the defensive side, and, you know, just his pure, pure, pure offensive instincts or just his instincts as a defenseman that can move the puck and has the capabilities that he has, there were some things that were in full effect tonight for Jamie Drysdale, and that's something that gives me confidence going down the road if this guy can find a way to remain healthy and if, if he can put up performances like that, that definitely bode some confidence for the future of Jamie Drysdale in Flyers uniform because he has looked pretty good in the past two games since, you know, coming off of the injury. So we'll see where that takes them from there. Owen Tippett has also been hot as of late. He's got five goals in his last five games, so that is very important for this team in terms of the offensive production because we would definitely love to have Owen Tippett just continuously go off. He's got nine goals now on the year. Another two goals tonight for Travis Konechny, one of those on the power play, and it was also a beautiful pass from Matt Vaymichkov, basically just to set up a wide-open Travis Konechny who manages just to put it, bury it behind Merz Lincoln's to make it a 3 nothing Flyers lead. And Columbus, they did have their moments. The Flyers, you know, in the second period, there were a couple of shifts where they were just hemming Columbus in their own zone for a very long time, and they weren't able to score off of those chances. And, of course, the one time the Flyers make a mistake during one of those dominant shifts goes the other way. Travis Sanheim takes a penalty. Columbus goes to the power play, and then instantly Columbus scores. It's just one of those, of course, you took a bad penalty, at the worst possible time, and maybe that could be the situation that kind of shifts the momentum in the game. And Columbus did score in that fact. It did look like momentum was shifting in their favor, if not for a really good outlet pass by Joel Faraby to Travis Konechny, who buries it on the on the breakaway, puts the Flyers up 4-1, gets that goal back. Then you go into the third period, another beautiful pass by Matt Van Michkoff to Morgan Frost, who buries the rebound past Merce Lincolns, puts the Flyers up 5-1, and then Columbus, they get a couple of garbage time goals in there. RIP Sam Harrison stats, because he really didn't face much in this game. There really weren't a lot of dangerous chances early on, halfway through this game, because Columbus was just basically playing, you know, Dead water, basically. They did not look energized. They did not look ready to go, and that's probably what you should expect from a team that's coming off of the West Coast swing. You know, there's a lot of travel mixed in there, a lot of different time zones. You're finally coming back home. There's a lot of fatigue that settles in. So good on the Flyers for taking advantage of a team that was probably very fatigued in the Columbus Blue Jackets. There were some moments where I thought, oh, my God, please don't blow this. But thankfully... They didn't do that. <laughs> Thankfully, they didn't do that. But even, like, <laughs> off aside from this game, Matt Vavichkov with another two points tonight, as I'm going to keep repeating myself on that fact. You know, <laughs> after the game against Utah on Sunday nights, uh, since the game was basically over, it was the final few seconds of the game. There was a big scrum 
in the final few seconds. And Matt Vay Mitchkoff, of course, was a part of that scrum as he likes to be because he's very feisty. Apparently, that's something I did not expect from his game to, you know, enjoy getting into the scrums. It feels like he gets into something, uh, whether it's chirping, whether it's, you know, hitting back and forth, shoving back and forth. He does literally everything on the ice. You know, this guy is just a perfect 20 billion tool player at this point. But, um... He gets into the scrum, and the referees are trying to hold him back, and I guess since he got a couple of penalties there, the refs just decided to toss him from the game in the final few seconds, and what was basically so beautifully Matt Vay Mitchkov asking this, <laughs> I guess a kid asked him for an autograph as he was going down the tunnel, I think it was a water bottle or something like that, so he's like, sure, the kid throws down the water bottle, he autographs it, gives it back to the kid, it was just like... What? <laughs> that was because you could because I was sitting there in the mezzanine level in the second floor. I could see it right there. It was just like what what's going on down there? He definitely autographed something for a kid, one hundred percent. So that was just something that was pretty funny. And then they brought it up to Torts in the uh, pregame presser today, and it sounded like Torts had no idea what happened. I'm like Torts, how the hell do you not know that Mitch Cobb did that? So I couldn't tell if Torts was annoyed or just found that amusing, even though there was a lot of Flyers fans that were like, oh, great, since the reporter brought that up to Torts, he's going to bench Mitch Cobb most likely. <laughs> but that was never going to happen in that case. Torts, even though John Tortorella is John Tortorella, I don't expect him to bench somebody for something as petty as that. But I might be wrong at the same time because it is John Tortorella and he will bench people for certain reasons. So, <laughs> made a call in the break right there. Uh, did that even, was that even English? <laughs> made a call in the break right there. What the fuck was that? Might have caught in a, might have caught a break right there. My God, I can't speak. Holy fucking shit. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Matt V. Mitchkov is... Legit. Let's just look at it. So, Jason Martinez, he puts his stat right here on Twitter. So, he writes here on Twitter that, Jason Martinez, that is, in the almost now completed 14 games since Matt Van Mitchkoff was healthy scratched by John Tortorella, Mitchkoff has 7 goals, 10 assists, 17 points, and he's a plus 13. And he just turned 20 yesterday. <laughs> He's on a different level, man. He is on a different level. And I believe he he has 10 points in his last five games, if I'm not mistaken, as well. He's been going off the past few games. Yeah, just look at this. And this, yeah, from the Liberty Yell, yeah, Matt Vemichkov, after his 20th birthday, 27 points, 11 goals, 16 assists in 27 games. He's a point-per-game player, leads all rookies in goals and points, Calder Trophy favorite. He's got a five-game point streak, three goals and seven assists for 10 points with two assists tonight. You can't make this up, man. This kid is a fucking stud. A fucking stud is what Matt Vemichkov is. Holy goddamn shit, he is so fun to watch. It's just, you know, just look at some of his game logs. I believe they, they said on the broadcast tonight that this was his ninth multi-point game of the season. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane to the rate that he can take over games. The way that he could just purely produce. The way that he can set up his other teammates. And they're was a lot of talk about that in the beginning of the year where he was placing these passes perfectly for players, his teammates, to just put it in the net, to find a way to bury it, and no one just seemed they could hit the net at that point. They were missing a lot of chances from Matt Van Mitchkoff because, you know, I don't, I don't know, they just weren't ready for it. They weren't expecting the pass. They just couldn't finish on the shot. And Matt Van Mitchkoff definitely could have missed out on a lot of pointage there with, you know, players just not being able to score off of his beautiful passing. And now it does feel like that players are producing more. And Matt Van Mitchkoff just continues to do the same things. It's just flat out fantastic. And it does feel like he's improving on the defensive side as well. Back checking, hustling to get back into the play. So you could definitely I could I guess you could say benefit the John Tortorella right there. You know, maybe the healthy scratch got that type of situations in the Matt Vay's head on playing the two way game. And <laughs> he's just taken off. He is just taken off. Ten points in his last five games. 
When was the last Flyers prospect, Flyers rookie, that probably had as much hype as this? Or as fun as this? Probably a very long time. <laughs> probably a very long time. I guess we expected Nolan Patrick to be elite coming out of the gate, and sadly that situation turned out to be that. Claude Drew was never this right out of the gate. It took him a little bit to, you know, turn things on and turn into the player that he was. It's probably since Lindros. I guess you could say it's probably since Eric Lindros, most likely. Because in my entirety as a Flyers fan, I don't remember the hype surrounding a rookie like this and the way that this rookie is producing at the rate that he is. Matt Bay Mitchkoff, that is. Because it's just insane on what he is doing right now. This guy is going to be the face of the franchise for years to come. It's just amazing that he fell right into our lap. And it's so fun to watch every single night. It's must-watch television. There is a reason for even the casual fan in Philadelphia to watch this team. There's a reason. Matt Vay Mitchkoff, number 39. What is he going to do tonight? Is he going to have a couple of beautiful assists? Or is he going to score on a breakaway? Or is he going to find a way to roof one on the power play with his electric shot? Or, or if they go to overtime, he finds a way to seal the deal in clutch time. Like he has been doing all year long. It's much watch television. Philadelphia has a reason to watch Flyers hockey now. They just do. They really didn't have a reason the past couple of years because there wasn't that face of the franchise. They really weren't marketing a face of the franchise because they didn't have a face. It was really just marketing John Tortorella and Gritty. Now you have a guy to market. You have a guy that's going to sell tickets. You have a guy that's going to sell jerseys, merchandise, everything. You have that face. Now it's up to this organization to properly build around him. And they have the pieces. But you've got to see this plan to fruition. You've got to see it fully out because I want to see this kid win a goddamn cup in this city. My God, I'm going way too far here on this course. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wallowing in the greatness that is Matt Faye Mitchkoff. So can you blame me? Can you blame me? For falling in love with it. <laughs> you can't. You can't. It's just flat out greatness. That's what it is. So if we look at the Flyers upcoming schedule. And just look at their stats in general actually before we do that. So Travis Konechny. He's, a, he's above a point per game player with two points tonight. He has 32 points on the year. 13 goals. 9 assists. So that is... Very nice to see, unless this is not updated, because it most likely is not so. He probably has 34 points in 29 games, added 15 goals right there. So this page on NHL.com definitely hasn't updated yet. But still, you got an above point-per-game player, Travis Konechny is, and Matt Vay Mitchkoff at point-per-game. So, <laughs> fun stuff. Absolutely fun stuff there. And then if we look at the standings right now, just to see where the Flyers place, they're 13, 12, and 4. They're fourth place in the Metropolitan Division. And right now they hold a second wildcard spot one point ahead of the New York Rangers, who are absolutely in free fall right now. They are 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games. They trade Truba to the Anaheim Ducks, and they just continue to lose games, even though they just extended Igor Shesterkin to that monster contract. They're falling apart. They're falling apart. And it's a beautiful sight, if I might say so. <laughs> so, in a second wildcard spot, we'll see how this team keeps battling as the games go along. And now, let's look at the schedule for some of the upcoming games for the rest of December. So, a kind of a weird schedule, too, in that fact, because nothing really consistent here. A little bit of days off here. They have a home game this Thursday against the uh, Detroit Red Wings. Then they play Saturday afternoon in Minnesota against the Wild. Then they got three days off after that. And then on the 18th, they play in Detroit on the road. And then on the 19th, that's a back-to-back -back at home against the Los Angeles Kings at 7.30. Then they play at home against this Columbus Blue Jackets team on the 21st. And then on the 23rd of December, they go to Pittsburgh for the first time to play the Penguins. And then they have their Christmas break. Then they go out to Western California to play those games, including Las Vegas. 
to uh, start the new year before everything else here goes for the rest of the schedule. So not really going to get much into all of that stuff. Trying to see if there's anything here that uh, <laughs> pops up on the Twitterverse. If you just look at some of these stat, stat cards, analytics type of stuff, Matt Vemichkoff at the top once again. So that is fun to see. Uh, yeah, on a different topic, Emil Andre did took a heavy hit today, which shook him up a little bit, but he did end up playing the rest of the game. So, hey, kudos to him. He found a way to fight through it. They did, like, review it if it was a major penalty at the end of the day. It didn't look like it, in my personal opinion. They didn't call it a major after review. They did overturn it to make it a two-minute minor, but that was just something that stood out to me right there. But, uh, yeah, this was definitely the best game the Flyers have played in a little bit. So we'll just see where this carries them, how they uh move on after this, because they do got the game at home on Thursday against the Detroit Red, Red Wings. And where are the Red Wings at in terms of their record? They are currently a below 500 team. They are 11, 13, and 4, 26 points on the year. Uh, they're not a good team. They are not a good team. So we'll just see. We'll see how everything transpires for this Flyer squad. So that'll do it for tonight, everybody. Nice seeing Matt Vemichkov do Matt Vemichkov things, and it leads to a Flyers win. So over the next few days, tomorrow, there's really nothing going on. Maybe we could finally talk about Phillies and everything there. I, I hate postponing that a couple of days because I wanted to talk about it yesterday, but then all this drama with the Eagles popped up, and that's definitely going to be more discussions you know, during this week about that. So we'll wait to hear about that. Uh, so maybe tomorrow we'll talk Phillies, and we'll see how the day goes along there. So. Just stay tuned. You'll see something pop up in your subscription feed. So just uh, wait a little bit right there. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It does me a great deal of service. And also use the code TTP Sports. $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Great deal. Don't pass it up. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time.